Praise the Lord, everyone. <laughs> Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The tinge of enthusiasm on the kids' eyes. I can see everyone is waiting for the barbecue. Thanks, brother. Uh, most people, when we talk about uh, attributes of God or uh, character of God, we uh, especially uh, look upon love, uh, kindness, mercy, and also uh, we think about omniscience, omnipresence, and uh, we also look, uh, think about his holiness, uh, and uh, we also think about maybe his sovereignty, his uh, immut immutability. But at the end of the day, if you, most people will forget about the wrath of God. That's the true attribute of God. It's a very essential part of the uh, God's attribute. So look, uh, we will look into uh, this particular attribute of God today, uh, briefly, uh, just for a few minutes. Uh, it's an attribute is very unpopular because most people don't really look into God as an angry God, don't look into a God as, as distasteful because it's, for them it's distasteful because he's angry. He's, he, he, People can't comprehend God be ang angry with us. Uh, in, uh, th there's a contemporary theologian uh, uh, named uh, James Montgomery Boyce. He, uh, in, his uh, in his book called Foundations of Christian Faith, he has written like this. In human affairs, we rightly value justice and wrath of the judicial system, for they protect us. If by chance we ourselves run a fall of the law, there is always a chance that we can cap a plea, escape the technicality, or, or plead guilty to some lesser offense and be excused for it. But we cannot do that with God, because God knows everything. He knows the imperfections of the human uh, justice, but for the perfections of divine justice, it cannot be found. We, we deal with one to whom not only actions, but our thoughts and our intentions are also visible. Who can escape that justice? Who can um, stand before such an unwielding judge? No one. Sensing the truth as therefore, resent God justice and deny his reality in every way we can. So in, in other words, we don't like uh, looking at God's wrath or we deny it. However, uh, so we deny it. However, it, we, we look, at the, uh, look into the uh, Bible's con concordance. We, we, we can see more references to God's anger, God's fury, and God's uh, uh, relentless uh, wrath on the people who, who make uh, fall of his uh, statutes or rules that has been given to them. But God's wrath is an essential part of the God's character. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, if, we, if we really understand the meaning of the wrath, it, it basically says um, most of us think it is a state of being out, out of control, person who loses his uh, uh, temper, who, who, who is angry, words come out of it, it goes into violence because of the uh, impulsive action uh, that ha happens after something ha has uh, happened to him. But in the case of God, it's not so. It's not an impulsive action that happens. It's, it's basically God's wrath, wrath is a natural counterpart to God's holiness. We cannot call God being pure and holy and not think of uh, God uh, does not hate sin. Yeah, it's on. Thank you. So uh, let's. Uh, God's wrath is also uh, essential for justice because uh, God's. Uh, if God is going to act with justice, He is going to punish the wickedness. He He is going to uh, with ap appropriate severity with with, with what, what has happened. And also, in, in Bible also we can frequently see the references of the God being angry, God being showing God's wrath on the people of His children. Let's look into uh, five Bible, biblical truths that uh, relate to this uh, very briefly. Uh, the first one is the God's wrath is just. It has become a very common for many to argue that uh, the God of Old Testament is more uh, angry and he is more uh, furious than the God of the New Testament. 
but it's not the reality if you if we if we look into a few of the verses uh, here romans 2 as uh, paul writes uh, here romans 2 verse 5 but because of your hard and impenitent heart you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when god's righteous judgment will be revealed he's talking about the judgment day he's talking about the people who would be standing before the great white throne when the lord comes over and this uh, and judges the people uh, similarly in proverbs 24 12 it also says if you say behold we did not know this does not he who weighs the 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 heart that perceive it does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it will he not repay man according to his work so god's wrath is is love in action uh, against the sin. Uh, it, it's, it's a love in action against the sin that, that happens. Uh, like J.J. J. J. Packer uh, in the Knowing God book, he summarizes this. God's wrath in the Bible is never capricious, self-indulgent, irritable, morally ignoble thing that human anger so often is. It is instead a right and necessary reaction to the objective moral evil. And that's what is God's wrath upon. He, 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 his reaction is to the, uh, to the moral evil that each one of us might be having. Let's look into the other one, uh, which is uh, God's wrath need not, uh, is to be feared. Uh, God's wrath is to be feared because all have sinned and fallen uh, short of the glory of God. As Romans 12, 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. And also, we, it has to be feared because uh, we are justly condemned sinners apart from Christ who came down to this earth. Romans 5, 2, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's only through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are saved. And also God's wrath is to be feared because he is powerful enough to do what he promises. Uh, as Jeremiah 32, 17 says, uh, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And his promises uh, are eternal punishment apart from Christ that uh, as said by Jesus when he, when he was in uh, on the final judgment, he was speaking upon for the final judgment. He, was, he uh, spoke in Matthew 25, 46. He says, and these will be will go away with into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And that's what he speaks about the eternal punishment to, to the or wrath to the people who, who are uh, who fall away from him. It's uh, God's wrath is also consistent if you see all through the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. It is it is it's a common thing in even in the Old Testament. God is uh, furious on the people who have uh, not followed His sin. God, God must act judgely and judge sin. Otherwise, God will not be a God. Uh, as as in Jeremiah 30, uh, 23 says, Behold the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest, it will burst upon the head of the wicked. Uh, and Nahum is a very good uh, book where it, it's basically described about the whole wicked, uh, the wrath of God that is on the wicked people, uh, that comes on the wicked people. It, Nahum 1, 2 says, The Lord is a jealous and avenging God, and the Lord takes... Uh, avenging and wrathful the lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies even in in, in the new testament even in roman 1 18 it says for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men uh, and we know the revelation uh, 19 15 it says from his mouth comes a sharp sword with with he will strike down the nations uh, God's wrath is, is, is a love in action against sin, as, a, as a earlier said. Um, in John, 1 John 4, um, 8 says, anyone who does not have love does not know God, because God is love. And it's, it's, it's a real, because God loves so much, he, 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 it's, 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 it's against the sin that he acts upon. 
and uh, Roman 11:36 also says for him for him and th through him and to him are all things to him the glory forever because it, it brings glory to him he he loves the glory above all that's why he brings that the, he looks upon the people and that they would be uh, sinless uh, admittedly god knows for his own glory is the most sovereign a reali reality for many uh, and good news for uh, for uh, as well sinners it's it's after all hebrews 10:31 says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living god uh, but uh, w what we are happy about is god's wrath is satisfied in the jesus christ uh, um, as in 1 Timothy 1 15 says the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners for whom we are uh, I am the foremost Paul writes it and also in Roman 3 26 he says it was the show of righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and justifier of one who has faith in Jesus so God has done it so we we don't have to do it he gave us the righteousness through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he has kept us uh, away from, this, uh, from the wrath of God because God's uh, anger was satisfied with Jesus Christ. What are the applications if you see uh, that what are the applications that we see uh, we realize that they say kind of a de depressing topic when we talk about the wrath of God, but we, if we can go and apply, uh, apply it into our hearts, the first first one is, is this is a very good warning to each one of us that we think that they, we, we cannot sin uh, if we sin without any consequences. Those who think that we can ignore God whenever, because they, it is not immediate, the action that uh, happens with the God, but it, it can al always happen that the God can punish the children Immediately, all this can happen in the later part of the time when the uh, great white uh, white throne judgment will come into place. But the most urgent need for the application of the wrath of God is it is to get right with the God while there is still time. It's still time we have uh, to get right with the God. Uh, first, there is nothing than the greater consequence than our decision re regarding the Jesus Christ to, ac uh, to accept him to come to him to believe, have a belief in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Secondly, the, the most important issue is, 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 is urgency because we do not know how much time we have. It, it might be the life is so, uh, it, it's, it, it's so uh, uh, it can happen any time that we can be dead. So it's, it's the, the uh, earlier the better. That's what the Lord's, Lord says here. The application also comes into reach. Our, our most urgent work is to reach to others. And uh, as we are doing the barbecue today, we, we have to reach to others who are, who are the perishing souls to come to them and let them know of the, about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also, uh, though it may appear that the evil is acceptable uh, and uh, triumphing, we must not lose heart. We know that a day of judgment and justice is round the corner. And the Lord and Savior comes, Savior when He comes um, in, into the, into uh, and for the second coming, He will do the real justice. He will do the uh, great white throne judgment on the people who are wicked, people who who haven't uh, believed in Him, and and trust. It will be a very uh, bad day for the people who who have haven't really have a belief on the Lord. Uh, in this time, so as we look into going to the worship, let's look to the uh, that Jesus Christ, who saved us, who whose the wrath of God has been satisfied through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we are saved from that. May God bless this world. Thank you. <laughs>